are two core, two systems of cores. Ten, Mississippi. Two, the fourteenth. Um, all right, Secretary of State. Secretary of State deals with everything outside of America. Deals with everything outside. Hi, and welcome back to Mr. Raymond's Civics EOC Academy, where today we are going to learn about ratifying the Constitution, and in particular, the Federalist versus the Anti-Federalist. Now, in our last video, we learned about what were called the principles of the Constitution, with concepts like popular sovereignty and checks and balances. So at this point, we've really gone through the whole document and the big ideas involved. And today we are going to be looking at the period between the drafting of the Constitution and its ratification, as this was the period in which the states and the people debated this new document and the extended powers that it would give to the federal government, and more specifically about the creation of what would become America's first two political parties, the Federalists and the Anti-Federalists. The Anti-Federalists would go on to become the Democratic Republican Party. And this leads to our benchmark, which states to explain the viewpoints of the Federalists and the Anti-Federalists regarding the ratification of the Constitution and the inclusion of a Bill of Rights. So this benchmark gives us a big clue about what this debate needed, and that was, should we have a Bill of Rights or not? And just a reminder, teachers, that this PowerPoint and lessons with a variety of activities are available for $1.99. At Teachers Pay Teachers, just search for Mr. Raymond's Civics EOC Academy. So, as we discussed in one of our previous videos, the Constitutional Convention came to an end in September of 1787, but would not be ratified until 9 out of 13 states approved this new plan for government. And in June of 1788, that would happen. And while you don't need to memorize these exact dates, you do want to be able to put things in chronological order as your state exam is likely to make you do that. Another thing to keep in mind is that some of the delegates at the Constitutional Convention refused to sign this document. They liked things the way they were under their first constitution, the Articles of Confederation. And we have talked at length during these videos about the fear that pervaded this country about a strong central government. Remember, they were afraid of power. And while we had won the Revolutionary War and we were no longer ruled by a king, fear of what is known as tyranny or the abuse of power was still alive and well in newly formed America. So each state held what were known as ratifying conventions to debate and vote on this new document. And this is where the people and their leaders went through this new document and the new powers given to the federal government and argued about whether or not this new constitution was a good idea. And almost immediately, people began to wonder why was a Bill of Rights not added. And this is where those who were in favor and those who were, who were against this new document began to organize under their new titles the Federalists and the Anti-Federalists. And an easy way to remember who was for and who was against, well, Federalist starts with an F and they were for it, and Anti, which means against, and starts with an A, well, they were against it. Okay, we see this picture here, which basically tells us about how the Antis agreed that the articles needed fixing or amending, but that the new document was too much and they just wanted to stay with the articles. Okay, so here we have a chart and I would recommend if you're taking notes that you hit pause and write this down. Again, the Federalists were for the Constitution and the Antis were against. The Federalists said, hey, the Articles of Confederation was so messed up that we needed to get rid of it and write a new plan for government, while the anti said, no, let's just fix the original version. The Federalists were in favor of this concept that we discussed before, known as federalism, in which power would be shared between a strong central government and the state governments, whereas the antis wanted the state governments to hold almost all of the power 
and to have a very weak national government. Again, the Federalists wanted a large central government and the Antis wanted a small one. And this last line tells us who was likely to be a Federalist, and that was the wealthy merchants. And the Antis were usually small, not poor, but less rich farmers. Again, these are overviews, and there was plenty of people who didn't fit into the stereotypes, but that's basically who your everyday Federalist and Anti-Federalist was. Now, in order to plead their case to the people, three of the leading Federalists, Alexander Hamilton, James Madison, and John Jay, started writing newspaper articles under a pseudonym to convince the states and the people that this new form of government was necessary and that there were plenty of checks on power in the new constitution to stop tyranny or abuse of power. These articles push the need for a stronger central government and the need for this new constitution, and they're still very famous documents. They are some of the best defense of this new Republican democracy that's ever been written. And they're studied even today by students of government and law, and you're very likely to see an excerpt from the Federalist Papers on your state exam. And this quote, quote, if men were angels, no government would be necessary. If angels were to govern men, no controls on government would be necessary. This is a famous passage that shows up on a lot of practice state tests, speaking of not only the need for a strong government, because let's face it, men are not angels, but also the reality that those in government aren't angels either. So this new constitution instituted controls or checks on that power. And here we see our anti-federalists with some names you might know. George Mason, there's a George Mason University. Patrick Henry, the man who stated, give me liberty or give me death. And Samuel Adams, all of them good patriots who played a big role in the call for independence from Britain. But these guys were fearful that this new government would take away people's rights. So as we touched on, a compromise was reached. The anti-federalists agreed to go along with this new form of government, many very reluctantly so, as long as a Bill of Rights would be instituted, would come with this document. And that is what happened. With the promise that a Bill of Rights would be added, state conventions began ratifying the new Constitution. And the ninth state, New Hampshire, ratifying in June of 1788, thus made this document official. Here we see a map with the dates of ratification for each state and where most of the Anti-Federalists and Federalists were located. We see the small farmers in pink, mostly in the southwestern areas, while the Federalists were located on most of the coast, especially up north. And they were the people who wanted the strong central government to protect their merchant and trade interests, okay? They were located along the coast and they did a lot of trading with other countries. So they were most likely to be Federalist. And finally, our new form of government with its creation of the executive branch headed by a president became official with the swearing in of George Washington, our first president, in April of 1789. And as promised, our Bill of Rights, which we will be learning all about in an upcoming video, was finished three months later in September of 1789 and ratified two years later in December of 1791, the famous Bill of Rights. So let's review. Who was against ratifying the Constitution? You remember that, right? They liked things the way they were under the Articles. Yes, the Anti-Federalists. What was the name of the famous newspaper articles written in favor of the new Constitution? Do you remember? Mostly written by James Madison? Yes, the Federalist Papers. What did the Anti-Federalists insisted be added to the new Constitution? That one's easy. Yes. A Bill of Rights. Here's a tough one. What did Federalists and Anti-Federalists disagree most about? Okay, this is more than beyond just the Constitution itself. What were they really at odds about? It was the size and the strength of the central government. That was their big disagreement. And all the other stuff just went along with that. So how did you do? Did you get them all right? 
Regardless, spend some more time with these concepts, maybe read some of the Federalist Papers. Coming up next, we'll be looking at the three branches in much more detail, so be sure to subscribe for more videos. And just a reminder, teachers at this PowerPoint with a variety of lessons and activities are available at Teachers Pay Teachers. Just search for Mr. Raymond Civic's EOC Academy. And thanks for watching, guys.